Hello, I'm Dylan. And I'm Keon. And this is Trust Your Doctor, that podcast where we spend two hours picking out clothes, because this week we listened to The Ghost in the Machine. Written by uh, Jonathan Morris. Directed by Louise Jameson. And released in October 2013. Yes, that Louise Jameson. The one and only Leela. Same person. Yeah. She um, played herself on the show. That was her. Same person. <laughs> Louise Jameson playing Louise Jameson. <clears throat> um, yeah. Uh, apparently, she writes and directs for Big Finish. She's, uh, you know, hitting all the boxes, I guess. Um, yeah. She's written a couple Fourth Doctor stories for herself and the Fourth Doctor. If you think about it, that's a little bit weird. Um, maybe she gets back at Tom Baker for stepping on her lines so much. <laughs> Would be pretty funny. Uh, but yeah. Ghost in the Machine. Yeah, so this story features people getting trapped in audio, so finally... A story we can relate to. Because if you didn't know, we're just disembodied voices trapped in audio. This in podcast has secretly been a cry for a help shame. the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> we're just disembodied versions of ourselves floating around inside my computer. Recording a podcast every week. Um, yeah, so the truth is out. But, so, the yeah, the story begins with Joe coming out of the TARDIS She's all, oh yeah, I spent two hours picking out clothes. They're pretty groovy, Doctor. I hope you don't mind. Wait, Doctor, where are you? Yep, Doctor's not there. So, she... There's a funny bit about, like, the clothes she put on or something, but I forgot what it was. Um, right away, I put right in my notes and thought right away, I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. that uh, Katie Manning is one of the best actors in audios. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I mean, the only... The only thing that might be weird is if you come to this right after listening or watching some Third Doctor episodes, is mm -hmm. that she sounds noticeably a lot older, mm -hmm. and I don't think she really tries to hide it too much. Well, um, she's actually putting on her, she's trying to put on younger Joe voice, because when you listen to her in the interview, she sounds nothing like what she sounds no, like in the audio. I thought she did. I listened to the part of the interview at the to end. To me, it didn't, she didn't sound like it at all, hmm, like when well, she was just she regularly talking. Yeah, whatever. But, um, yeah, still one of the best actors in audios. Should also play the third Doctor, apparently, I mean, based on part two of this, so. I mean, so did the other guy. He played all three characters. <laughs> yeah, but he wasn't as good. <laughs> <laughs> he was good, but not as good. I mean, it was his first appearance at Big Finish and at Doctor Who, so. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Joe goes out. She's she finds some, some corpses. base. Yeah, she finds some corpses. She's like, "Wow, corpses! <laughs> cool, man." Uh, she finds the doctor. <laughs> she finds the doctor um, passed out. She's like, "What the heck?" Well, she thinks he's dead because she shines the torch in his eyes, and they don't like the pupils don't dilate. And he's like, "No, you can't be dead. I need you." Uh, she also. Does, she doesn't have a key, so she can't lock the TARDIS door, so she kind of just closes it to look like it's locked. But then when she goes back to it, she real, she finds out that it locked itself. Yeah. As soon as that happens, you know that that's going to come back to bite her somehow. Yeah. Like, it's not going to be a good thing for her. As soon as she's like, oh, it doesn't lock, you're like, oh, that's going to be a bad thing later. <laughs> <laughs> well, so she's she starts looking for the TARDIS key on the doctor's body. She's like, oh, I'll go get the medical kit and, and see if uh, I can buy them. And she looks in the first place she thinks of, which is his mouth. It's there, and then she leaves without him. No. <laughs> Honestly, the mouth is the last place I would check. I'd be like, okay, he's... Because she checks all his pockets, and she, like, pulls out all his random junk, and she's like, man, you really need to clean your pockets, doctor. <laughs> uh, and she doesn't find the key, obviously, because otherwise there wouldn't be a story. Because, but she does find this well, tape I mean, recorder. there would be a story. It would just be her leaving. That would be the story. It, it wouldn't, wouldn't be, be a that... very thrilling no, story. it wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there should be a story where the doctor and his companion just show up somewhere, step out of the TARDIS, see a full-on raging war, and go, nope, and just get in the TARDIS and leave. Oh, you mean a uh, massacre? <laughs> no, except, <laughs> no, except no. <laughs> in that, Stephen decides to go wander around <laughs> ancient France for four episodes. <laughs> 
well, it's not really ancient. It's like, like a couple hundred years ago. Yeah, felt I, ancient because of that reconstruction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess a couple hundred years ago is ancient. I mean, if fifty years ago is ancient, then yeah. I define one year ago as ancient. No, no, okay, no. Uh, I mean, yeah, I do sometimes. Yeah, I guess it depends really on what you're talking about. I, ancient history is usually referring to like ancient Rome and Greece and or like China. caveman times. Yeah, I guess if you want to go super ancient. Or like 4.6 billion years ago times. We call that hyper ancient. <laughs> You got these scale, hyper ancient, super ancient, and then ancient. Okay. <laughs> so Joe, she finds the tape recorder and it's got the Alice in Wonderland note on it. Use me. <laughs> <laughs> and instead of being and it's drugs, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> instead of being immediately skeptical of it, she just decides to go along with it. <laughs> she she uses it. She finds out it's empty, so she's like, oh, I guess the doctor wanted me to record stuff on it. Yeah. Bad Turns out idea. that that's true, but yeah, I guess it all works out. So she starts recording her voice. Um, the recordings get kind of complicated later on, but for yeah. now she's just recording her voice, talking to herself as she makes her way through this base, which is pretty dark and creepy. She... I'm Theorizes that it's America, Australia. Sorry for interrupting. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I really liked um, the first part of this because it was really creepy, um, especially later when she finds the other audio recording. But the soundtrack was pretty good, too. I mean, it wasn't really like music, I guess. It was more just like sound effects and ambient sort of noise mm -hmm. um, and ambient music, too. So not just sound effects. But yeah, I thought it was pretty creepy, cool, you know, fit pretty well. Yeah, I liked part one, especially near the end where it started getting, oh man, what's going to happen? But then part two got extremely confusing near the end. Well, I mean, for me, confusing isn't a bad thing, um, but it did feel kind of dull to me. I was just like, all right, whatever, they're body jumping, and yeah. I mean, confusing can be good in some instances, but, in instances, but I feel like in this story that the confusion was more of a, I don't really know what is happening in the plot right now confusion rather than hey i'm kind of confused as to why they're doing this confusion i think it's all the body jumping probably but yeah, yeah. it's also because um katie manning really only selectively changes her voice when she's the third doctor and sometimes she doesn't and that also kind of got a little confusing because i couldn't tell if she was the doctor or joe because yeah i think it was it was the when she, when the third doctor was in her body his voice got deeper, and then he's like, oh, shoot, gotta play it up like I'm Joe. So then she went back to the Joe voice yeah, but and, some, like, tried but then, to differentiate it, but didn't really. Yeah, because then sometimes she would slip into the doctor's voice at some points, too, like... Yeah, I think that was her thinking, like... I was like, uh, uh. I, was, I was pretty sure, when I was listening to this, I was pretty sure, like, all right, that's the doctor sort of slipping up there, but they didn't really make it too clear what was happening, so whatever. Yeah, especially since the other guy didn't change his voice at all. <laughs> For anyone. He, he kind of did. Like, when he was the doctor, he kind of maybe oh, just changed barely, his speech pattern. Barely. <laughs> <laughs> so, Joe finds the, the like, control room for the base. Yeah. So, more people are dead. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> wow, what a surprise. <laughs> um, so she finds another recording. And she's like, oh, better play this. And it's this guy named Benjamin... Shit, 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 <laughs> it's Chico Chico Chiquito, it's yeah, Chiquito. Chiquito, yeah, Chiquito. they spell it Chicoto, but they say it Chiquito, yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chiquito, <laughs> so it's him, and um, the, he, he's left like a warning tape, but he leaves the warning until the end of the tape, <laughs> Yeah, he does um, the classic science fiction thing where instead of upfronting the information you need to know about the warning, he goes on this ramble about, hey, you should probably get out of here before actually explaining why. Yeah, so basically, I forget exactly what he says, but it's something along the lines of, we decided to, the our head guy who was in charge of what we were doing um, was trying to revive people from the sound of their voice. So we got this voice recording from Edison. Yeah, the very first. Of uh, him 
reciting uh, Mary Had a Little Lamb, mm -hmm. and we tried to revive him, except things went horribly wrong, and now you have to get out of here. And Joe's like, wait, what? Let me play that again to make sure I understood what he was saying. And it's slightly different. This is the part that I thought was really creepy. I don't know why, but it just had like sort of a creepy effect where it's like, oh man, it's different this time. I guess because, you know, subliminally, or you just know like a recording is going to be the same every time. And then mm -hmm. when she listens to it again, it's like, oh man, what's going on? And then he leaves until the end of the message. The information is like, by the way, I'm just a soul trapped in this recording. That's why it's different. Also, run away. Also, hope you didn't make a recording of this recording. Because <laughs> if you did, you're screwed. <laughs> and I was like, oh, shoot. Um, yeah, he says that there was a second voice on uh, Edison's recording and that they accidentally ended up reviving the second voice instead of Edison because the leader of the base was like, hey, there's a second voice. Let's clean that up and revive that too. <laughs> And, and that turns was a out mistake. it was an evil entity. I really alien. don't know what it was. Yeah, alien. It is an alien because in part two, the doctor's like, "Where'd you come from?" And she's all, "Yeah, I'm from another. Uh, I'm from another galaxy. Oh. I'm an alien." Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that doesn't really change anything. Add, change, yeah. It's just <laughs> no, there. It's, yes. <laughs> um. Yeah. So Joe starts playing back her recordings, and they start talking to her. And um, and this is the part where it got weird because apparently she can record and play her own recording at the same time. <laughs> record, stop, repeat. I think that's how it went. Something like that. Anyway, the evil entity whose name I actually forgot. I don't um, think she ever had a name. Oh, I don't know. So the wiki just refers to it as the second voice. Yeah. All right. I guess we'll call it the second voice then. Um, it takes over Joe's body and no matter how much Joe tries to delete the recording or record over it doesn't work and it part one ends with her getting trapped in the recording and the entity taking over her body yeah this actually now that i think about it reminds me a lot of a reboot episode named midnight which is one of my favorites um because in midnight there's a very similar concept where the doctor's talking with an alien that he doesn't understand and as he talks more the alien gains control of his Huh. body yeah that's pretty cool <clears throat> yeah it's actually one of my favorite reboot episodes so when we get there that'll be exciting <laughs> in like a year and a half and i guess we can talk more about those similarities when we get there because i don't want to spoil it for you um but anyway yeah it takes over her body and joe gets trapped inside the recording and it's revealed now that when you're a uh, soul slash disembodied recording you can only say words that you put to tape before yeah so, like, she can't say the word butterfly because um, she, didn't she didn't record, record it. But apparently Benjamin Chiquito did record the word butterfly. Yeah, apparently he point. recorded a lot. <laughs> yeah, uh. in the interviews, Jonathan Morris was like, yeah, I never actually checked to make sure that all the words I used in part two that Joe had actually put to recording before. So I hope no one goes and checks that because uh, I didn't. No, I thought he was saying he. I only listened to one minute of the recording. Or, sorry, one minute of the um, interviews, which was... I clicked on the second part of the interviews and listened to, like, the first minute, and that was him explaining it, but maybe I just didn't get, like, the context or whatever, but I thought he was saying, like, I did go back and... No, he said he explicitly didn't. He said he really uh -huh. hopes that no one does check, because if it works out, that'd be kind of cool, but he didn't check. Oh. Okay, cool. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, wow. <clears throat> anyway, apparently the inside of the recording looks sort of like the base. Yeah, that's kind of weird. There are people in there trying to get out. Especially since the recorder was the doctor's that he took from the TARDIS, so that's... Yeah, that's kind of weird. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the there are people in the recording trying to get out, and I guess the longer you're in the recording, the more you start to fade or whatever, but she meets Chiquito slash Chikoto. Well, yeah, because... Ch okay, so Chik Benjamin explains that, you know, the tape degrades, so the longer you're in there, the less voice you have, and... Yeah. Eventually, you just don't have anything, and Joe's like, oh, yeah, there's been the shadow that's been following me, and I'm like, wait, what? That came out of nowhere. Well, it was there at the beginning when she first got into the <clears throat> recording, and then she meets yeah. Benjamin, so, yeah. Um, she's like, could that be the leader of the base? And Benjamin's like, nah, nah, he's long gone. Yeah. So, <laughs> it's actually the doctor, surprise. Yeah. He takes over Benjamin's body, which is a power that I didn't know you gained when you went to the tape realm. <laughs> Apparently so. Um, and then he 
explains to Joe that this was all part of an elaborate plan. He expected her to record because he had confronted the entity before as well. So he expected Joe to do just what he did, get trapped in the tape and meet him here. Yeah, but he didn't make a recording of his voice. So when he got trapped, he didn't have a voice. Yeah. Uh, And he also battled the entity for control of his mind. Uh, So yeah, the third doctor basically doing that thing we... uh uses Joe for his own nefarious purposes. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and he had to take over Benjamin because Benjamin had a lot more words in the recording than he did. Yeah, so. he had none. Yeah. So We also forgot to mention that the leader of the base ordered the base sealed as soon as he realized that the second voice was loose because he didn't want it getting out. And he's like, well, I guess eventually the tapes will degrade and the second voice will be dead again. Uh, but it, the TARDIS arrived before that, and the second voice Great. is like, well, the TARDIS is going to be my way out. Yeah. So it wants to get into the TARDIS, but it can't because the Doctor and Joe bluff their way out of it Well, Joe doesn't soon. know where the key is. She legitimately doesn't know where the yeah. key is. She's not bluffing, but the <sighs> alien thinks she's bluffing. She's like, you know where the key is, and Joe's like, I don't know where the key is. Um. So the Doctor tells Joe, right, that that was all part of his plan. <laughs> And that she should leave the rest up to him because he has another plan. And he's going to take over her body now and pretend to be Joe for the alien. So they switch bodies. So now Joe's in Benjamin's body and the doctor's in Joe's body and Benjamin is in the doctor's body. Yeah, except the doctor was like disembodied, I think. Well, yeah, kind of. I really didn't know where the doctor was. (laughs) <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, this is where I was like, yeah, Katie Manning should just play the third Doctor. She's pretty good at it. <clears throat> um, yeah, I mean, I think we mentioned in Find and Replace it was that her third Doctor impression was uh, pretty decent. I mean, it's not perfect, obviously, but she gets the mannerisms down. No, and I mean, obviously, I'm just kidding. I don't <laughs> think she should really play the third Doctor, but, you know, maybe. Yeah, maybe. <clears throat> I don't know. Um... I mean, she she gets the mannerisms, which is all she needs in this story, because the doctor's in her body, so she can just do her own voice. I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is one of the few companion chronicles that takes place entirely in real time. <laughs> all the other ones are mostly just the characters retelling stories to other people. Uh, yeah. So the doctor goes to the voice, or starts talking to the voice, and starts bluffing his way out of it, and I didn't get why the voice believed him, because... Most, I mean, the doctor bluffs a lot, obviously, but most of the time he does it. He sounds pretty confident in his bluff, but here he was like, uh, uh, the TARDIS has a mechanism where only me and Joe can open it. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. (laughs) We also forgot to mention the second voice erasing a copy of Joe and Benjamin and them screaming in pain as they get distorted. But then then I guess it restores. Yeah. I don't know. And I was like, that was kind of weird because. I guess they never explained if you make a copy of the tape, does it make a copy of their consciousness? So are there two were there two Joes and Benjamins running around? And if so, how did the non deleted Joe experience what the deleted Joe experienced? I don't know. I I didn't get that that was a copy. Maybe I wasn't paying enough attention. Yeah, she but, said it was a copy. She's like, now you know what will happen if I delete the real one in f- like uh, five minutes. Uh, I thought she was just <clears throat> erasing part of the tape and she left like a bit of it. And that's how they were left. But I don't know. Nope. Uh, it was a copy. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah, so lots of questions about tapes here. <clears throat> Not that they really had to go into it at all. I mean, it's would be probably make it less entertaining if they did i mean no but i feel like she should have just totally dropped the copy line because then i was like but how did the non-copy joe experience what the copy joe yeah how does this work <clears throat> uh so the doctor takes back over joe's real body not the the tape body yeah. the real body and the voice is like well i'll go into this tape deck uh, but I'm going to set it to delete in five minutes. And the doctor's like, all right. And then he's like, yeah, I'm not actually going to take you to the TARDIS. I'm just going to swap some things around so that you're on the tape when it gets deleted. He's like, damn it, foiled again. Yeah, he switches like the, he records them onto like the TARDIS log and switches something around. And... Yeah. I think he records Joe and Benjamin into the TARDIS log. And then like he keeps or, uh, yeah, the he... second voice on the tape deck, which is set to record and I mean, delete in five minutes. Something like that. And um, at the end, Benjamin... 
uh, requests uh, to be deleted. And he's like, don't tell Joe, though. And I was like, why? She would probably understand exactly what you're telling the doctor right now. She interacted with you more than the, than the doctor did. <laughs> yeah. Why would you just keep her in the dark about this? <clears throat> She's obviously going to ask about it. Because there's no body for him to go back to. So that's why. Also, he wants to die because he's been in the tape for like 10 years or something like that. Yeah, no, I get why he wants to get deleted. But like, why do they want to keep Joe in the dark about it that's what i don't get oh yeah oh, no i wasn't explaining to you i was just explaining because we never explained oh, that his body was yeah, de okay. decomposed yeah uh, so he doesn't he have a just, body to go back to he could just go back into his skeleton and be like a living skeleton <laughs> don't think that's how that works <laughs> <laughs> um yeah yeah i don't really know yeah so to your I question mean, yeah i don't all. know maybe they're doing like that season eight i think thing where they like baby joe a lot for whatever reason <laughs> Even though she's supposed to be, I don't know how old, 20-ish. <laughs> and, like, somewhat intelligent, at least. <laughs> and uh, pretty kind of fearless. As soon as she goes blustering all these alien invasions on Earth. Uh, but uh, that's what they do, so... Well, that's what we assume they do, because the end credits play before they actually switch back to their own bodies. Yeah. This is, I guess this was just a result of, I don't know why the download was like this, but this was across like, uh, I think 14 parts for the story itself. And then the two interview two tracks interviews, plus and like the a, preview for the, yeah, the next one in the but, range. But a lot of the endings to the, where the tracks were, um, were, were weird. Like the, where they, where the voice is deleting the copy, that's an mm -hmm. end, them screaming is like the end of one of the tracks. And then you start playing the next track and it's like guess mm -hmm. you don't want me to delete the copy or I, I guess i'll delete the real one next time or whatever she says you know so whatever yeah i don't know why big finish um because so if you download they, they release everything on their website in two download versions the mp3 and the m4b audio book version <laughs> and for whatever reason the mp3 instead of making it like one file for each part of the story which is what i would have assumed would have made the most sense they just copy the tracks directly that they load onto this onto cds when they make the cds um yeah which maybe... is the same that they did on spotify the spotify ones the mp3 versions are like 17 tracks per part yeah well, well, seven that, per part, that, roughly. That lets them play more ads between the parts, I guess. Yeah, I, I mean, it makes it sense on Spotify because they want to play all those ads, but, like... Yeah, I didn't... I mean, <clears throat> I guess I was... This is the first audio I downloaded from Big Finish, so I guess I wasn't paying attention, or I, I don't know. I just clicked the first download button I saw, so I guess next time I'll download the M4B version or whatever it is. Yeah, which is one file, but it's an audiobook file, which nicely saves your place if you stop listening to the file. Um... Yeah. Big finish. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, yeah, there was a trailer for The Beginning, which is the companion chronicle where Susan runs away from Gallifrey with her grandfather. It, the, the Beginning. Her, her other, it's The Beginning. Her other grandfather, not not the doctor. Yeah, yeah on, her, on her other side. <laughs> Whichever side the doctor's on, it's the other one. <clears throat> yeah, overall, I thought part one was pretty strong. A pretty strong setup. Yeah, because part one was pretty creepy, and I guess once they reveal the villain and the villain's plan, mm -hmm. you kind of maybe lose some of that. Like inevitably, maybe I don't know. Uh, I mean, kind of. I think a lot of it got lost that in the in the body jumping in, and yeah. like all the explaining that they did, and just standing around talking. I guess. Well, they are in the tape, so like, what else could you do? But yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, body jumping. Body jumping feels like a really classic sci-fi concept that a lot of things do and it feels like it's a really i guess kind of underwhelming conclusion to the setup that they set up um although honestly i wouldn't know what else they would do instead of that so yeah. <laughs> i mean <laughs> not claiming i can do it better yeah i didn't know why i wasn't too happy with the body jumping but when it first showed up i did go like uh body jumping so <laughs> <clears throat> i think it's because like it doesn't it just comes I, out of nowhere Yeah, it doesn't feel like it follows logically from what they set up in part one because in part one they set up oh like this record recording yeah. has taken on a life of its own so you think okay well the recording taking over a person that makes sense but like when they got into the tape realm and they're like swapping bodies <laughs> with their voices and it's like 
well, like, either they needed to more clearly define what the heck is happening when you get uploaded into the tape so that that body jumping is there actually makes sense, or they needed to come up with some other way to resolve the story. Meh. I mean, I didn't hate it. I think it still sort of worked out in the end, but... Yeah. yeah, I just felt like it was underwhelming, really, compared to part one. Well, it might also have to do with the fact that, like, they sort of just come up with this plan, and then mm-hmm. the villain just falls for it immediately. It is a short story, so... Yeah, they've only got 20 minutes to... Resol- they, I mean, I guess the way they did it was part one sets up the conflict, and part two resolves it. I mean, which is probably better than dragging it out like they do in the classic series so much. But still, it's like... I guess part two didn't feel... The villain didn't feel that dangerous anymore because, like, they just come up with this plan and the villain falls for it at the end. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's kind of like every Doctor Who story, except they, like, add some twists and turns into yeah, it to make the, it interesting. Yeah, they just didn't have many twists and turns added into it to make it interesting. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, it had that they were twisting the tape recorder to, to rewind. That's wow. a twist. Just made me glad we're living in the digital age. I don't have to deal with uh, all the body jumping that came with tapes. No, no. <laughs> yeah, the seventies. You know, they were just rife with people <laughs> taking over other people's bodies. And it was this huge problem. People didn't even know the Secret Service had to basically keep the president out of the out of the Oval Office after Nixon just planted all those bugs and tapes in it. Just people jumping all sorts of into presidents. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. You can email us at the doctor decadentvegetable dot com. Questions, comments, concerns, angry rants, love letters, your thoughts on Ghost in the Machine. We didn't mention what this was named after, but uh, it's named after like a philosophical idea from I think Descartes, which is kind of the idea that the mind and the body are separate things; that the mind just inhabits the body, which is. The metaphorical ghost in the machine is the mind yeah. inside the body. And I, I, he just took the phrasing from Deus Ex Machina from the Greeks, which yeah, God from the machine, which has mm-hmm. to do with plays, uh, surprisingly enough. <laughs> so, yeah. <clears throat> and then it gets even more contorted in Ghost in the Shell, where they replace machine with shell, and you're like, but why? Uh, anyway, you can find us on Apple Podcasts. Google Play and YouTube all at Trust Your Doctor. Leave a rating if you liked the show. Check us on Facebook, Trust Your Doctor. Like us on Facebook. Also check us out on Twitter at QID Podcast and follow us on Twitter. And next week, we're listening to Helicon Prime. But until then, the end. <laughs>